All right, so while we're talking about functions, I wanna to quickly touch on something called arrow functions in JavaScript. These are really not gonna be that important for us right now, but later on in the course, we're really going to have to understand these, and we'll go more in depth at that time. So basically, an arrow function is a special form of a function expression, which is really useful when we have something that's very short to write. So I wanna take a look at an example that we already know how to do. So let's say we wanted to make a function and we wanted this function to basically calculate the square of a number. So if we think about squaring a number, it's just multiplying the number by itself or taking the number and raising it to the power of two. So I'm gonna do something like const get square, okay? And I'm gonna set this equal to, I'm gonna set up my little function expression. It's gonna be an anonymous function. And so I'm gonna put in here as a parameter, just the number that I wanna find the square of, okay? So I'm going to return number times number, and there's other ways to do that. You can use your math.pow, okay? You can use your exponentiation operator. Whatever you wanna do there is fine, okay? So I'm just gonna call this. I'm gonna go console.log, the get square. Let's just do this a few times. We'll use two, so that should give us four. Let's just do a few of these. We'll do five, that'll give us 25. We'll do 10, that'll give us 100. And let's just do 15, that'll give us 225. Let's pop this open and run this, and we get those as expected. So 425, 100, and 225. So now how do we convert this over to an arrow function? The first thing you would do is get rid of the function keyword, okay, so you don't need that. Now if you clear this and run this right now, you see you get an error, okay? So to fix this, you're going to, to the right of your parameter, put an equal sign followed by a greater than symbol. This is your arrow. Okay, so you need this, and basically, if you pop this guy back open and run this, it runs fine again. But this isn't all we can do. You can make this more concise in this particular situation. If you have exactly one parameter, you're allowed to remove the parentheses, okay? And then if you have exactly one line, you can remove the curly braces and the return statement. So let's see this run first. Let's clear this and run this. You see it works fine. And then I can get rid of this. I can get rid of the return keyword, and then I can get rid of this altogether, okay? So everything's on one line here. It's nice and concise, and you'll see if we pop this back open, clear this and run this, it works fine, okay? Now let me show you another example of this, okay? And we'll just kind of go through all the scenarios so you get lots of practice. I'm gonna now do something like const. I'm gonna do square minus square. So what I'm going to do here, let's just set it up as we know. So function keyword, I'm gonna do num1 and num2. And let's go ahead and calculate first the square of number one. So I'm gonna do const square, let's do one, and I'll do is equal to, I'm gonna use math with a capital M dot POW just to show you different ways to do things. I'm gonna use num one as the base and then two as the exponent, okay? I'm just gonna copy this. I'm just going to change this to number two and I'm gonna change this to square two, okay? So now we have these two different squares and what I wanna do is just subtract. So I'm gonna return square one, square one, and then minus this square two. Okay, I meant to do square two there. And basically, if we call this guy right now, let's go ahead and console.log this a few times. So we're gonna go square minus square. Let's do something like five and three. Okay, so we can think about this. Basically, first is gonna calculate this square here. So five squared is 25. Then the squ second square is three squared. Three squared is nine. And it's gonna return 25 minus nine, which is 16. Let's pop this open and clear this and run this. We get 16 as expected. And you can do a few of these if you want to see. So we can do something like, let's say 4 and 10. That would give us a negative, right? Because this is 16. This is 100. 16 minus 100 is negative 84. Let's do something like 7 and 5. So this would be 49 minus 25, which is 24. So let's pop this open and run this. You get 16, negative 84, and 24 as expected. Now, let's go ahead and practice converting this over. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of the function keyword. So let's get rid of that. And then to the right of these parameters here, I'm going to put the equals followed by the greater than symbol, okay? And again, if you pop this open now, clear this and run this, it's gonna work. Now, if you have two parameters, you cannot get rid of the parentheses here, okay? You can't do that. If you do that, you're gonna have an error, right? If I get rid of this, you can see it lights up and you clear this and run this, you get a problem, okay? So if you have exactly one parameter, you're allowed to do that. Otherwise, if you don't have a parameter or you have two or more parameters, you can't do that, okay? So right now, the way this is written, this is as good as we can get. The thing is, we could do this in one line. Right now, you need this return keyword because you're on multiple lines. You also need the curly braces because of that. If I get rid of this return statement here, basically these are all gonna give me undefined, okay? So if I pop this open, 
and clear this and run this, I get undefined three times. Okay, so you have to return something. So what I'm going to do is just make this more efficient. I'm just going to grab this right here and I'm going to put this up here and then I'm going to subtract away. I'm just going to grab this right here, okay, and put this right here. And then I'm just going to get rid of all of this. I'm going to get rid of the curly braces. I'm going to get rid of the operations. I'm going to get rid of the return keyword. Again, if this is on one line, okay, as it is here, I know because of the wrapping that it comes to the next line, but basically I'm still on line one if you see that there. Because I'm on one line, it's going to return this guy right here for me without me typing the return keyword. So if I pop this open and clear this and run this, you see you get the same result. Okay, let's just run through like two more examples just to get some more practice. Let's say to make something kind of silly, we set up a function that just tells you if it's January or not. So right now the month for me is January. So I'm going to do something like const, I'm going to do month and I'm going to get this from JavaScript. So I'm going to go new and then date with a capital D and then parentheses dot get full. Actually, I need get month. So get month with parentheses. And then what I want to do here Let's just set this up. We're going to do an arrow function directly. So I'm going to do const is January. Okay. And I'm going to start out instead of writing the function keyword, I'm going to put equals and then I'm not going to use any parameters here. So I'm just going to use some parentheses and they're going to be empty. It's the same thing as if I did something like function like this, but I'm getting rid of the function keyword. Okay. That's the only difference. Then I'm going to go here and put, do my arrow here. So the equal sign followed by the greater than symbol. And what I'm going to return here, I'm just going to ask, if the month triple equals to zero, because this guy right here, when I look at the month, it's going to be a number that's either zero through 11. Okay, so it's gonna be zero through 11. Zero is for January, it's the first month. Then 11 would be for December. So something like February would be one, March would be two, so on and so forth. So if this is true, I'm just gonna say something like, yes, it is January, okay? And maybe I'm excited by that. So I'm going to, let's say, put the sunglass guy in. And then otherwise, let's put something like, no, it is not January. Okay. And then let's just go ahead and put up, I don't know, maybe like an annoyed guy. Maybe you don't like it if it's not January, something like that. So right now, if we call this function, so I'm going to console.log, this is January. Let's go ahead and stop for a moment and think about what's going to happen. When it comes here, it's just going to ask if the month is equal to zero. So in this case, it will be for me because it's January. So we're just going to return this. Yes, it is January. Okay. That's all that's going to happen. Again, this is on one line. So that's why you can do that. So let's pop this open and clear this and run this. We get, yes, it is January. And if you change this, let's say we do this and we make the month. Now let's say it's March. So that's going to be two in terms of this date guy. So let's pop this open, clear this and run this. And we get, no, it is not January. Now, if you wanted to, what you could do here, you could take this guy right here and you could pass it in. So you could pass this in here. And instead of having parentheses here, I could just type in month like this. Okay. So let's get rid of this and come up here. And now this will work fine. And you notice that I'm able to get rid of the parentheses because I have exactly one parameter. So let's pop this back open and clear this and run this. And we get, yes, it is January again. All right, so let's just do one more so we can just get some more practice. I'm going to do an example with some voting, so whether or not a person can vote or not. So basically, I'm going to do something like const can vote, and I'm going to set this equal to, again, you normally type the function keyword, but here you don't need that. So I'm going to open up some parentheses because I'm going to have more than one parameter here. So first name, I'm going to do birth year, so when the person was born, and then the current year, which I'll get from JavaScript. Okay. So again, I'm going to put my arrow in. So the equal sign followed by the greater than symbol. And then here, depending on whether or not you're going to have one line or not, again, if you have one line, then you can just type what you need to return. If you don't, then you need to open up these curly braces. Okay. And then basically from there, you would go through and you got to make sure you return something. So here, I'm just going to do this inefficiently first. So I'm going to do const can vote. And I'm going to say this is equal to the year, okay, which is going to be given to me by JavaScript minus the birth year, which you're going to put in. Okay. And then I'm going to ask if that's greater than or equal to 18. Okay. So remember because of the operator precedence, this is going to be done first, then it's going to compare to 18. So is it greater than or equal to 18? So this is going to end up being true or false. And then this is the lowest priority. So it's going to assign that to the can vote variable. Okay. So then from there, I'm just going to return a little string saying this first name variable, and we'll say dollar sign. If the can vote is true, I'll ask that question. Basically, I'll put can vote, okay? And let's use an emoji for that. 
and then otherwise we'll do can't vote okay and we'll do a little annoyed emoji for that so let's go ahead and come down here okay so we're going to need to get the year from javascript so let me go ahead and do something like const we'll do year and this equals new and then date okay and then dot get full year full year and didn't mean to do that and let's go ahead and come down here and i'll just tighten this down just a little bit so we have some room and i'm going to say console.log and i'm just going to call this can vote and I'm gonna pass in for the first name, let's do Mark. And then for the birth year, let's do like 1990. And then for the current year, I'm going to reference this year right here, okay? So I'm just gonna type in year right there. And you're gonna see that because right now it's 2021, this person is old enough to vote. Okay, so if we pop this open and clear this and run this, we get Mark can vote. Okay, so it works fine. And we can do a few different examples here. So let's change this to, let's say Steve. Let's say Steve is pretty new in life. So let's say he's born in 2010. So right now he would be 11. And then let's say we have somebody like, let's say Jenny. So Jenny, and let's say she's born in, I don't know, let's say 1981, so she can vote for sure. Let's do one more person. And let's say we do Ben. And Ben is really, really young. Let's say he's born in 2015, okay? So if we pop this open once again and clear this and run this, we see Mark can vote, Steve can't vote, Jenny can vote, and Ben can't vote. Okay, so that's as expected. So we see here that we have the return keyword. If you get rid of it, again, I just wanna show this to you, you're gonna get undefined. So if we clear this and run this, you get undefined four times. But we can clean this up and write this on one line, right? Because this right here, I didn't need to use a variable here. I could have just asked this question here. So I could take this and put it directly in here, okay? And then I can get rid of all of this. So I can just return this and I'm going to get rid of this. So we've made it more efficient. So you can see here that setting up this arrow function, I need the parentheses because I have three parameters. Then I have my arrow here, my equal sign followed by my greater than symbol. And then I'm only returning this guy right here. It's all on one line. Again, I know it wraps to multiple lines, but it's still on the first line. So I'm returning this string right here, which is going to ask the question, if this year here, which is going to be given to me by JavaScript, minus the birth year is greater than or equal to 18. If it is, the person can vote. Otherwise, they can't. So let's pop this open and see this one more time. And clear it and run it. And you can see Mark can vote, Steve can't vote, Jenny can vote, and Ben can't vote.